No rest for the wicked. Let's go. Wyndham Championship off the backs of a major championship, the PGA Championship. I don't know about you, but I feel a little weathered. It's like the morning after the Super Bowl. The first major in 13 months. And we cashed it. Yes. Uh, a lot of you sent me your winning tickets uh, over Twitter. Great to see. Congratulations to everybody. Uh, let's see if we can piggyback that into, into something else. What a weekend. Colin Morikawa, definitely a pretty popular pick in the community, and you saw that for obvious reasons. Well, he didn't have the exact profile of the other guys in the top 10 that hit it a mile. He was really never out of position, and he's the best long iron player on the planet, and that's, that's exactly what happened. That was a recipe for success. I'm happy I didn't get distracted or put off in any other way. That was almost Patrick Cantley on my card so thankfully it wasn't and we hit it and we cashed the top 10 with Colin and the top 10 with Finau great to see him charging all the picks kind of gave an effort uh but you know only the winners really do matter again wasn't like he wasn't touted by a bunch of people but we all sort of saw the same thing I will give myself a little credit on one angle that you don't find in the models or the spreadsheets uh you know People can laugh at this. They can say what they want. I truly believe the home game without fans did him wonders. I don't know if he gets to a position on the weekend if there's galleries there. What I mean by that is there's a 23-year-old kid entering his first major championship in his backyard. And there's expectations because he can actually win this thing. And is it easier to play the golf course when 250 friends, family, and acquaintances aren't there at 8, your 8 a.m. tea time on a Thursday? Like, I, nothing almost to do with Sunday. Because then, I, you know, maybe the adrenaline could have worked both ways. But getting out of the gates and surviving Thursday is exponentially harder if his fourth grade girlfriend is, like, standing there on the fifth tee box at 9.15 in the morning. That's just my opinion. Am I a professional golfer? Absolutely not. Am I human? And do I feel? Yeah. So maybe in some ways that kind of makes sense. At least it did to me. And look at what happened with Rory at Portrush last year. He got blown off that thing day one before it started. Fleetwood had a major championship two years ago at essentially where he walked his dog his entire life. Like down the street from his house. Struggled. Struggled. Those are two recent examples. Maybe you could find other ones. But I'll die by that. I'll die by that. The home game, all the advantages of the home game, the course knowledge, the comfort level, sleeping like in a trailer in your own driveway pretty much to replicate some of it, all your surroundings being there, but not having the disadvantages of accommodating friends, family, the randomness of, of seeing faces that could jar you. I mean that. Um, but I'm not nearly as mentally strong as those guys, so I can make a claim like that. Anyway, too much time talking about last week because we're just here for this week's milk. So uh, let's give it and hopefully we can do something else. Wyndham Championship, Sedgefield Country Club, 7,100 yard par 70. We've been here a ton. We know what to expect. Uh, there is kind of a prototype winner for here. Hitting it far doesn't do a ton for you. Winners like Webb, Davis Love the Third, Brant Snedeker, last year JT Poston, uh, Siwoo Kim, Donald Ross Design, Bermuda Greens, familiar to a lot of golf gamblers, and there's a precedent for what it will probably take to win here, which is immaculate approach play and putting, driving not nearly as important as you look at the list of past winners. Those are guys that can just roll it and pin stock, and they don't depend on hitting it um, hitting it a mile uh, top of the board, Webb Simpson, 10 to 1, sort of deserves to be that. We're on Bermuda grass, we're on a short track, it resembles the heritage in many ways. Uh, that's my favorite comp here for it. Uh, he deserves to be the favorite, Wyndham Championship, he's won here. His first born is Wyndham, uh, named after this tournament. Uh, he's in a happy place, I'm certain everything lines up for Webb. Brooks Kepka comes in at about 11. Interesting with Brooks, guys. I honestly thought he'd withdraw. Why? Because Alpha went backwards Sunday and, you know, he was getting massages throughout the week. And I thought he could play up to his his narrative and being like, uh, instead of acknowledging he sucks, sort of falling on the injury. Uh, I think he's a bit of a phony. That's just my opinion. Because guess what? I'm silly enough to believe golf is hard. And he does practice. My opinion. No disrespect. The guy's an animal. We hit that bet. You asked me 
Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Who could I make go away from this tournament to make me feel great about hitting one of my bets? It's Brooks Kep- It's Brooks Kepka. So I was happy he went away. Uh, no, the guy's a four-time major champion. I insult him, but I'm kind of just making jokes. I do think a lot of his takes are attention-seeking behavior, though. Let's get that out of the way. Reed, 14 to one, past winner here. Fleetwood, you see the highs, you see the lows. It's it's a mitz bag, but he could score low and, and take it down. He's at 18 to one and Casey at 20. Passing all of them, skipping each one of them. If they win, we'll just have to miss it. We're going to go a nudge hair higher. 22 to 1, guys. Justin Rose. Justin Rose, last week I actually put him on the... Well, I didn't put him on the picks. I spoke about him on the video as almost a great example of how great odds checker could be because there were some insane price disparities uh, on the odds checker grid for Justin Rose. And he was a former number one in the world. And look, the guy was there on the weekend. He almost cashed it. He really annoyed me throughout the week because I felt he was luck sacking a ton, missing a ton of fairways. But his irons were absolutely dialed in. I want to say 14th in the field at Harding Park. And his putting was beyond phenomenal. So driving's not really important at Sedgefield. So I'm looking for Rose to bid a run of form here. 22 to 1 for Rose. I don't think, uh, I think he could easily have come in under 20. I'm willing to back Justin Rose here for the win par 70 courses those seem to be his sweet spot so i'll go back um this time i'm actually going to tout him and bet him even last week i just suggested him because i thought the number was great but i had my bets my bets in and if you did bet him last week he got a bit of a sweat uh out of it that being said 22 to 1 justin rose on this golf course i think he could just tear it up i truly believe he is primed uh at this point of the year I was thoroughly impressed, again, I said it last week, that he took off the Memphis WGC, a free payday, just to sort of get his things in order. And we saw that start last week. So if he piggybacks that into this performance versus this field, it's a very winnable event for uh, for Justin Rose and his ball striking. 22 to 1, that's over at Bet365. Uh, Kevin Kisner, 35 to 1. This is also at Bet365. This has come down a bit. Seems like he's going to be a popular pick this week. But if you trust me, uh, I like the other guys who are picking Kisner also. This was my first bet out of the gate on Monday. And even though the number has dropped from what I have it, I'm still willing to condone it at this number. He plays incredibly well at Heritage, which I find, again, as I mentioned with Webb, as an ultimate comp course. He has a slew of great finishes uh, there. I know he has a second place at Heritage. Short course, Bermuda grass, screams Kevin Kisner, in my opinion. Donald Ross design, uh, a lot of layouts similar to what he succeeds at, in my opinion. Shot a 68 and a 67 on the weekend at Harding Park. The guy made so many birdies, he just finds trouble. Hopefully, without as many penal situations lying around Sedgefield, uh, he can just make those birdies and clean up what caused a lot of those bogeys and... You're not going to make the same bogeys at such field that you would have at a major championship layout that requires distance. Here it really doesn't. It fits right into Kisner's sweet spot. So I'd be willing to go to the window this week with Kevin Kisner. Uh, another guy sort of in that range. When I made my notes, he was 40. Now he's 30 to 5 to 1 on, on um, BetMGM. But I'll still go there. Sung JM. It's easy to look at things in a... How do I put this? Going back to Honda or right around, you know, right into the new year, this guy was Colin Morikawa. Everything people are kind of saying about Morikawa, they were saying about Sungjae a few months ago. He got that win at the Honda. He constantly uh, was contending. You just felt it. His numbers were dropping big time for the PGA Championship before a run of form went backwards on him. I could talk a lot about it. This guy loves Bermuda grass. He struggled at the PGA Championship, but he hit all his putts on the Bermuda grass at at the WGC, which kind of, he really struggled in Memphis, but he was hitting all those putts on the Bermuda. His win at the Honda comes on Bermuda. This field, this course, this number, it all kinds of lines up for me for for Sung J.M. Another one, a theme. I'm going to go with another young kid that in the moment, Morikawa was clearly ahead. There's no kind of doubt about it. His ceiling does perceive to be bigger. But not too long ago, Joaquin Neiman was right with these guys. Uh, he came on tour a little bit earlier. But Joaquin Neiman, 66-1, to 1, 
Bet MGM. It's all about ball striking. He's not the greatest putter in the world. If you're with me, guys, I'm going to often dip into the team no putt and hope the ball striking can prevail. We can pin stock and the variable that is putting. We can get the hot putter, make the putts. That's where it comes in for Neiman with me this week. He's a talent. He's a course fit. Remember his big run at Heritage right out of COVID, the second event on the restart. Uh, talent, course fit, number versus this field. Uh, I got to pull this trigger here. His putting can be atrocious. That's just the reality of the situation. Uh, mi- uh, I want to say missed the cut last week, but it wasn't due to a lack of ball striking. He's still striking the ball incredibly well. So what he has done well and what he does well is... He still seems to be doing well. No one seems to be better at approaches recently than than Neiman outside of Paul Casey and Russell Henley. Uh, approaches mean everything here. Let's get that hot putter. As you can see, a bit of a trend. I got two Wiley vets with Rose and Kiz. And two kids, high ceiling kids, that, that this number versus their numbers versus this field, I'm willing to back with M and with Neiman. And I'm going to top it off over 100 over 100 to 1, Brandon Grace, Brett, bet 365. Grace, listen, reality of the situation is he had to withdraw from the Barracuda a couple weeks ago in second place heading into the weekend because of a COVID result. Just an unfortunate situation. You hope all the best. You hope him, his family, everything's good. Uh, when I saw the number, I bet it. I was a little concerned he might be withdrawing or hasn't passed a final test, but... Uh, by book rules, it would get refunded. I'm not concerned about that at all at this point as I haven't heard anything uh, that should concern me at this point in the week. So I'm all systems go with the Brendan Grace Brett bet. He's wanted Heritage. I keep bringing up Heritage. It's my ultimate course fit. Um, it course comp, really. So if you've played well at Heritage, to me, you can play well here. He wanted Heritage. And he's been striking his irons in fuego, guys. Absolutely on fire with the irons. He's a pesky player. Get lucky. Get lucky, Brendan. Uh, That's all we're asking for this week. It's a big number against this field. If you want to each way that, I could even be tempted to. Let's let's say this is a half unit. uh, Quarter unit outright, quarter unit uh, each way on a Brendan Grace for this kind of number this week. But his irons have been fantastic. He's playing well before he got shut down. This course works for him. He can have a birdie party. And that's part of this week, guys. You're going to have to go low to win this thing. Sneds put up a 59 here a couple weeks ago. Those are in play at Sedgefield. That's just the reality of the situation. Uh, So you need guys that can just go on insane runs of birdies on not really the hardest course on tour. That's what it'll take this week. You got to score in the 20s or go home. At least you won't be in the winner conversation. Uh, I'm Jeff Feinberg, oddschecker.com. I hope we hit some other winners this week, guys. Oh, boys.